Hey folks, good to see you. David here with another couple of builds. Last video I showed you an outhouse made out of corrugated cardboard. We're going to keep with that same material, but I did say that you could scale it up. So, we'll go do a couple of huts. Now there's going to be four pieces in total to this lot. There's going to be two baseboards and two buildings. We're going to use the same pattern for both buildings, but a bit of a range of material so that you've got some options there. A couple of different paint schemes, just to show you what can be done. We're also going to do different time periods. One of them is going to be way back in time. That's going to be a Saxon grub hut. The other one is going to be a little bit more modern, maybe Wild West, maybe sort of industrial age, whatever you fancy. Let's make a start. As usual, I'll leave a list of materials that you're going to need down in the description, but we'll go through them on camera. First thing for the main structure of the building, use something like this. This is core flute. I know it's called different things in different countries. I'll leave that on the screen. It is plastic and we are going to be using that because at some stage, one of the buildings will get quite wet. So you don't want it warping. Foam card is fine if that's all you've got. That foam core will, will stop it from you know, collapsing and going soggy on you. Again, on one of the models, you will need some of this. This is reclaimed plastic packing, and it does need to be thin. And again, we're using that because that section is gonna get quite wet. Here, we've got two sheets of reclaimed corrugated cardboard. This one has been done in the more regular roofing panel pattern. This one has been done in the rough old wallboard pattern. If you missed the video on how I made this stuff, I'll leave a link up top for you. Kids, ask your parents before you use these. These are extra long matches, so parents please cut the ends off because the kids don't need them. They are around about 10 centimeters long, which is an ideal length for what we are going to be using them for. I have some assorted twigs. And finally, imitation fur. You don't need a huge amount of this, but we will be thatching one of the roofs. So let's get on with things. Okay, let's make a start on cutting some pieces out. We'll do the side walls first. We need four of those. Now, I want these to be only two and a half mil high, and that comes out as one, two, three, four, five, just there. And I want it seven and a half long, because the dimensions of the building are going to be three bases long, two bases wide, because they are quite small buildings. All right, I managed to fluff that up. Okay. Right, there's the four side pieces done. Now, for the end pieces, we're looking for something like that. Here's one I did earlier. And the height of it is going to be five centimeters in total. And you can see from the cutting board that I've made it slightly wider because we have to take into account the thickness of the material because we want that full sort of two base width on the inside and that will join quite nicely there so and we only want two doorways the back ones are going to be left with the roof section but a blank or full wall at the back so measure it up and that is the center top and the center of the side and the center of the side and then to get the doorway mark straight across from the roof end like that that's going to the top of the doorway and yes, it is quite a low doorway. You'll see why later. And I'm going to make this two centimeters wide. So that is going to be about there and there. Now, when you're cutting this doorway out, obviously try and be as careful as you can, but 
it doesn't matter too much if you cut into sort of like the surrounding structure because we will be reinforcing that with other material and like that okay I'll get these other two done all right so that's just to give you a idea of the size of the structure when we're finished time to put some cladding on these walls so this is the rough wall board sheet of corrugated cardboard and I'm going to turn it over like that now I want the boards to be standing vertical so I'm going to glue these on like so and I've put them I've put it on top of a board so that I can move it away but let's just get a good coat of glue on there and I am going to leave a little bit of a gap at the end because we do want a little bit of wiggle room right I'll get these all glued on and then I will put a cover over and a heavy weight just to keep everything nice and flat so it doesn't warp so it's had a chance to stick down and dry a little bit now time to cut them out this is the point at which the builds start to differ just a little bit. On all of these pieces, we are going to cut the card as flush to the sides as we possibly can. Except the doors, we'll deal with those slightly differently. But on two of the side walls, we want to leave a bit of an overhang just at the very edges. And I'll show you why in a second so I will start getting this lot cut out and then we'll move on to the next part all right we have two sets of pieces here and as you can see the difference between the side walls these ones have been cut flush along the edges and these ones have a bit of an overhang now let us deal with those doorways very quickly and we are starting to hide some of those core flute edges and I just want to cut straight through the card down there and then along like that just get a spot of glue and then wrap it around like that and I'll pop something on top to weight that down while it dries and sticks in place and then we shall move on to the next part okay two sets ready and I've powered up the hot glue gun so it is time to start assembling now what I have done here is I've cut some small strips and we are going to use these to reinforce the corners I will deal with the new build first and that's this one where we have these overhangs of the wall boards now all i'm going to do is use the hot glue gun and just quickly tack those flush so that we've got a better surface area to hold the sort of corners together make sure that's flush okay and then run down there and glue that together and that is one assembled right same with the next one now for the Saxon grub hut we are not going to glue them flush at the corner like that we are going to offset the corner ever so slightly so that looks fine and this is the reason why I extended that surface area on these just to give it a little bit more stability and I'm just going to run a bit more reinforcing glue just on there just to make that joint a little bit stronger okay looking good to me so far let's deal with the more modern build first but the other one is very similar we are now going to start to add some more structural members to it so let's have a line of hot glue down there let's stick that in place and then we can use a ruler get it even with the bottom and mark that there for a cut and slice through like that so that is going to sit like that I'll do that on the other four and now we measure a top beam like that there and we'll tack that in place now what we want to do is put two more of these long supports and one will be about in fact I'll mark them off 
なるほどね。And once you're done with the supports, you should end up with something that looks like this. I'll put that to one side, and I will now work on this one, but instead of the matchsticks, for the older ones, we're going to use twigs because they are going to be logs. So by this stage, you should have something that looks like this. Now that we have the full footprint of these models, we're going to start work on the bases. Now, part of the reason why we're doing that is so that as stuff on these dry, we can be working on the bases and then swap them over. Saves time. Now, again, I am going to use core flute for this. The thing about the Saxon grub huts, which this is based off, is that they had a structure that was built over a pit. Now, unfortunately, you can't make a pit and dig into your gaming table, so so what we're going to have to do is simulate that by making a mound for the building to sit on top of and then we can dig into that mound. So we are going to use multiple layers of basing material, build it up into a mound and then make that sort of pit in the middle. Now this is round about the right size. It doesn't matter so much about how much gap you leave at the back and the sides that is all fine that's looking good but at the front because you need a step down to get into the building you need to leave on that top layer at least 2.5 at the front plus a little bit more just so that we can get that step down and work down through the layers okay possibly more than that if you're going to use more than two layers of material to make your pit out of or your mound out of should i say that is entirely up to you I'm going to use two layers and then a baseboard. So I will get on and cut these out. Now that I've got the top layers cut out, I'll use those as a template to make the next layer down and then I'll carry on and do the same with the baseboard. One thing to note, especially if you're using core flute, obviously when you glue things together, there is a possibility that they can warp, but core flute, because it has these channels, um, holes on the inside, It'll flex in one direction, but it has problems flexing in the other, just because of the way it runs. So, if you are using core flute, at this stage, make sure that your next section down is at right angles to the first one. So, they're kind of crisscrossing like that. That will give it better structural integrity, and it means that there's going to be less chance of warping. So I will get on and get the rest of the base done and then glued together. Okay, so that's all the baseboards cut out, stacked. I've put the building on just so you can give an idea of what the finished model is going to look like in the kind of size that we're talking about. While the base is drying, I've come back to the buildings and I guess this is a before and after. What I have done on the new style one is I've added support beams all the way through those um, long diagonal pieces and I've also outlined the doorway as well so that now has to be done on here because it's wood I just used straight PVA so that now needs to dry on this one the reason why I left that gap is so that I could do another full round down here and then for the other corresponding pieces the door frame and those side ones I'm going to have to fiddle about and slice twigs in half to get half rounds so I will crack on with that and then we'll get back to the bases back to the bases again and what I want to do is smooth out these sort of very upright edges just a, a little bit and for that I have some neat PVA and I'm just going to get a wallop around there and these are strips of kitchen roll and we are just going to pop that on there, follow the contour around, a bit more in the back, just crinkle it up to turn the corners, get it pressed down, and then to smooth it off, this is very watered down PVA with some detergent in, and we're just going to completely dope that, and that will get those crinkles out of it and solidify the whole lot and it doesn't matter that there's a, a bit of a pattern on the paper there because it is getting covered in flocking in any case so we'll never know last piece of construction on this more modern one as you can see i have cut two sections of the roof tiling corrugated cardboard out and i've also 
put some um, markings in with a biro just so that it'll take a, a paint job later on and we will get this glued into place so it's going to sit on just like that and just for sizing purposes you don't want that much in the way of overhang it's going to go right up to the top but I have marked it out so that it comes a little bit further down because there is a gap there and we just want sort of line of sight blocked and now the second to last piece of construction for the older style one remember that thin clear reclaimed plastic packing well we are going to pop some of that on there just like that because we're going to be laying the imitation fur on the top of it and this one is a little bit more finicky but we are essentially just tacking that in place because all of that is going to be covered with fur and then once that has been dried because we do want to tuck the fur kind of underneath that top rafter those supporting struts can be snipped and removed back to the bases we've got these edges covered over and sort of smoothed down now it is time for a bit of ground cover just before I do the base coat now this is PVA I have only slightly watered it down and we are going to put a dirt covering down on the floor Get that all covered over. Once this is done, it'll be off for an undercoat. And we want it on that step as well. Now, I haven't gone up over onto this area because that's where the building's going to be. But this step, obviously people can have stepped off onto it from any direction so we'll just do a nice wee blob around there and then give ourselves a bit of a trackway down there and tapering off just to show where it's been worn and then straight sand giving it a good covering because we want to go all the way up those edges and that can have a couple of uh, minutes to dry I'll knock the sand off allow it to dry properly and then it's off for an undercoat baseboards have been painted and given a flock coat and that's dry so I'll get that moved out of the way and we'll crack on with the buildings as far as the buildings are concerned they've been mostly painted this one is actually complete so I'll pop that off to one side you can see photos of that one later and we will do the thatched roof for this one now I've already got fur cut out you have seen me do this before but it was a while ago so I will just go through it again quickly now this time I do have a roof support so what I'm going to do is run a line of super glue along the underside of that and then just slot that in place to tack it there so the top's tacked in place just to keep it there but to strengthen that join I'm just going to flip it over and using the hot glue gun I'm just going to do a couple of reinforcing lines on the inside just so that it doesn't slip on us and now that that's held nice and securely we'll just lift that up as you can see there's that reinforcing plastic and I'm just going to pop neat PVA on there and glue that down in place then that can dry for a little while that's nice and secure so it is time for a haircut and this is just straight very diluted soapy water I did tell you this part would get quite soggy and we're just going to work that into the fibre we're using the soap in there so it breaks the surface tension and actually gets down in among it and then using a comb we're just going to comb it out needs a bit more on that side and the edges there and we're just going to use 
the comb to properly work it all the way down. And now that it's not lying nice and flat, we will start trimming it. Now I'll start, and you don't, you do want to, to leave some overhang, so that material underneath comes to about there. All right, so I'm going to leave it, I guess you would call it the equivalent of quite a nice fringe. And then to give it a more layered effect, this is a trimmer and I'm just going to go along in lines, brush the excess out of the way and work up the model. Not going all that deep but it will be enough to just give some definition to, uh, to the rows of thatch and then again just use the comb to get that excess out. Alright, I will get on and do the other side as well. And we are on to the final stage. This is equal parts paint, PVA and uh, water with some detergent in, just my usual mix. And do be careful because since I've already painted or pre-painted the, the sort of framework, I don't want to be getting on onto there, but it is going to be a very runny mix because we are doing this while the fur is still wet. And do put a couple of applications on at the same time because we really do want it to soak all the way through because that PVA is what is going to stiffen it out into straw. And then large tooth on your comb, just comb it through again. And at the front or the sides, just make sure that you kind of tease it over a little bit because that's more the way it would be. Any long stringy bits like that you can always neaten up at the end. And that is going to be ready to dry off. I'll get some photos done. Okie dokes, let's wrap up. The baseboards, they're there for completeness, not a great deal to say about them. Because a grub hut has a pit that it's built on the top of, we had to include those. But at the end of the day, this particular build was about the hero material, which is the corrugated cardboard. Same pattern for the buildings, two different sets of materials, two different paint jobs, good deal of variety. I'm really pleased with these. If I had to choose a favourite, I would go for this fella here, mainly because with the more modern sort of style of it, it just looks cleaner. And the really good thing is that because of the paint job we used, sort of grey on grey, and using a, a fine liner to uh, mark the divisions, we've got a slate roof as opposed to the uh, sort of wood slats that I used in the dunny construction in the last video. So that's really good. It it's just gives you an idea of the versatility of that material. But, of course, if you want to go all Saxon, then that thatched grub hut is probably what they had. And that is fine as well. To be perfectly honest, when it comes to the paint scheme on the uh, sort of wooden side walls, I probably prefer the addition of the brown on this one. And I think I'll probably remember that for next time I'm, I'm doing something like this. But that is all we've got time for this time. However, before you leave, it would be appreciated if you could hit the like and subscribe buttons and get notifications and all that kind of thing. And until next time, I'll see you.